And this talk is about the REST programming language and the LLVM compiler infrastructure. Um, first we're going to talk about REST, then LLVM, and in the end we're going to talk about the REST compiler. REST is a new open source programming language by Mozilla. It's statically typed and multi parading and it uses LLVM to create the executable. Um, its main features is that it's both safe and secure, um, meaning the handling of memory, aliasing, dangling pointers, and stuff like that. Uh, they're planning <laughs> on releasing a stable version this year, and the main reason for developing Rust is that it's used in Servo, Mozilla's next generation web browser. First, uh, we're gonna show you a basic example of a code. Um, this is the standard hello world. As we can see here, we have main functions, uh, and we got the C curly braces that we're all used to. Print line here is a macro, and macros are specified with the exclamation mark point. Since it's multi paradigm we can also use this as a functional language. This is the factorial, and we have match expressions. The, the last expression in every function is also the one the expression that's returned from the function. Uh, Rust lets you handle have full control over the memory uh, at the same time as it keeps the memory safe. Um, there's usually a trade-off between control and safety where C++, the program has full control, but it's easy to shoot yourself in the foot. Whereas Haskell and Python, um, the programmer has no control over the memory layout and how it's handled, but at the same time, uh, it's safe. Rust tries to achieve both. Um, Rust features an uh, optional garbage collector. And to understand it, we first look at the memory model of Rust. Here we sh see the different or the important pieces of memory. You have an exchange heap, which is global, so each thread can access it and all threads can access it. And each task has their own stack and a garbage collected heap. So there's no global garbage collected heap. Let's look at some examples in where things appear in memory. The first one is simple. It's allocated on the stack, on the task lo local stack. Next one is a classical pointer you get it on the exchange heap, and this is you can communicate with between tasks, as we will see in a moment. This is how you get a garbage collected value. Here you have a reference counted box on the GC heap. You can also have a um, garbage collected uh, reference that is garbage collected with a tracing collector. Um, here show an example of spawning a new thread and as you can see it transferred the variable b which was a pointer onto the exchange heap over to the other stack and now the first thread cannot reference this variable anymore it's moved so as i said for now we have a reference counted uh, garbage collector. In the future there's coming a tracing collector and it's written as a library so the user can decide which one to use, both if it's convenient. Rust features the same zero cost abstractions as C++ does. Here we see that uh, abstractions have a lot of overhead. We have an array list of strings in Java, uh, and we put 
the string ABC into this array list. Um, the reference to the array list is stored <laughs> on the stack, but the internal structure of the object is stored in the heap. Same thing with the strings and the data of the strings. The rest, like C++, allows for um, uh, the internal structure to be placed directly on stack and the inter internal structure of the string to be placed directly into the data of the vector. Uh, this gives us a lower overhead and a direct control over how the memory is aligned and the programmer knows exactly what it looks like. Uh, let's look at how REST guarantees the, the memory to be safe. There's basically two reasons for memory error. It's aliasing and mutability at the same time. Aliasing is, uh, we have aliasing whenever we have two or more pointers pointing into the same region of the memory at, at, any, at the same time. Mutability uh, allows us to change objects during the program. If you have both at the same time, we can get memory errors such as dangling pointers. Uh, let's look at an, ex uh, an example in C++. We have a vector of strings and we insert a string ABC. Then we declare an element to point to the first uh, first data element in uh, of the strings. Yeah, here we have aliasing, but it's all okay. What happens if we now add another string to the vector? The vector r will reallocate in order to make room for the other string, but this will result in the element uh, pointer to point to be a dangling pointer and point to a place on the heap that's no longer allowed. REST solves this problem by not allowing both aliasing and mutability at the same time. Uh, REST does this by introducing either a single ownership, shared borrowed references, or mutable borrowed references. This is an example of single ownership where the variable is moved between functions. Um, uh, when we call printval, x will be moved into this function and will not no longer be available in main. Because of this, we can, it is not able to print x two times because x uh, is moved away in the first function call. If you want to do this, we have to use shared borrowed references. We now have aliasing, but we, since we don't, since x is not a mutable variable, uh, this is not a problem. If you want to mutate x, we have to declare it as mutable, and we have to pass along mutable references. Another pro problem that C and C++ exposes is the ability to return a pointer without guaranteeing that the memory is still there. So here we see an example where I create a vector on the stack and then I return a reference to it. it this is not allowed in Rust because whenever you return a reference, you have to guarantee that it's going to live uh, long enough and seen on the signature of the get method on the vector here we bind the reference that is returned to the lifetime of the vector itself and therefore this foo function is not allowed because it the lifetime of the reference that is returned is longer than the lifetime of the vector and this is not allowed Let's look at some of the features of Rust. Uh, Rust uses straight to structure the object 
oriented part of the language. Uh, traits allow for both declarations and definitions, and traits can inherit from other traits. It's similar to interfaces in Java. Let's look at how we get polymorphism using traits. Here we have declared a shape trait um, and a function get area that every shape has to implement. We also define a get color function and a print function that all shapes automatically inherit. We can then make a rectangle struct that implements shape and a get area function. We also uh, define a sphere struct implementing the shape trait. Uh, like rectangle sphere have to, has to implement the get area function, but we also choose to override the get color function to return green instead of red. Another concept borrowed from functional languages are algebraic types. Basically, enumeration types where you can store data inside the values. So here you see an option that is either none or it's sum. And the sum contains a value. This is a generic value, so we can basically put anything here. And it's used, for instance, to, uh, as the return of a map get function. This is because Rust does not have any null pointers. So this is a way to handle the case when the map does not contain the value. Another discussion in Rust these days are mutability versus uniqueness. This example shows a mut uh, immutable reference and we see in the set function that the variable is actually mutated. And this is an inconsistency with the notion that you have mutability and this shouldn't be mutable. In this slide we see a mutable uh, reference. Uh, we have a constant reference to a mutable reference and therefore we can't mutate it. And But this sort of don't, doesn't make sense as it's a mutable reference. So here in the future we might see unique instead of mutate as a keyword. And this is a quote explaining this problem. Rust uses the LLVM uh, compiler infrastructure as a backend for its compiler. So we're going to first discuss LLVM, then how Rust uses LLVM. LLVM as, is, as I said, a compiler infrastructure, meaning it's a bunch of tools usually used in compilers. And it's modular, so it's easy to reuse and build new compilers using it. It's different from a virtual machine or a high-level virtual machine in that it doesn't have defined object model. It doesn't guarantee any type or memory safety. And it's different from GCC because it's modular. And while having uh, a comparable runtime from performance, but far better diagnostics because of a better front end. Um, these are five features which, Rust, uh, which, which LLVM says that keeps them from, makes them different from other compilers and interpreter before. And here is a reference to a paper. Uh, LLVM defines an internal representation, which is shown here. It's kind of similar to assembly, but it also has functions, so it's higher level and it's used while transferring the program through the pipelines, through optimizations and for code generation and stuff like that. And this is an overview over some compilers and backends used for LLVM, and it shows how it's very easy to add a new architecture or a new front end for a new language, and you will instantly have a lot of possibilities. In connection with this class, we see that WebKit now uses LLVM as a JIT engine for optimizing JavaScript. The Rust compiler, it's the, a front end for LLVM. 
and this is the pipeline. You go from source code to a parser to an AST. You configure and expand to a new AST, still in the Rust language. Now you do some analysis and some transformations, still in Rust, and then you translate to LLVM using the LLVM API. And you optimize the code to get objects files, and you use the LLVM linker to get an executable. And this is broken down here. We have the parser, simple parser, recursive descent. Um, in the configure and expand step, uh, you desugar the syntax and run macros on the source or, or uh, on the AST. So it's not just like in C. And you have some conditional compilation. In the analysis step, you have specific optimizations for Rust. As uh, LLVM doesn't don't uh, have an object model, you might have some optimizations for your specific object model that might be done here. And lifetime and region analysis for Rust that's specific to Rust. Then you transform to the IR, and it's done through an API and not through writing a code gen for the IR. This enables the IR to change at the latest stage, and as long as the API stays the same, every compiler will still work. Um, then all the optimizations are run, and these are configured by the Rust project or the compiler, and you run the ones that works best for Rust. At the link stage, LLVM can perform further optimizations as it can now see the whole um, program. And you can also link to C and C++ code through objects files. All these steps are actually contained within one function in the compiler, so it's easy to uh, read up on. And here are some sources, and actually the link to this function in the source. Um, this Monday, as we recorded this session, uh, Apple released their new programming language called Swift. And it's actually kind of similar to Rust, and it draws some inspiration from it. And it's written by Chris Latner, mainly, who also is the main guy behind LLVM. Thank you.